Hello, my fine smelling friends. Welcome back to Notes from Josephine. After my last video about perfumes that are great in early fall, I thought I have a bunch of perfumes that were made for early fall. I also got a couple of questions about Shepra perfumes, what I have in my collection, and how they work in the fall. So I've broken this video into kind of two segments. The first will be Shepras, some very classic Shepras, and the second will be more modern releases, more recent releases. Some of them still have that fall, outdoorsy, almost sheet pro vibe, um, but they're easy to find. They're all affordable. Let's jump right in. I'm not going to be spraying these perfumes or I'll never be able to walk in this room again. So I'm going to use a method that I picked up from Maria Meliora. Um, if you haven't checked out her perfume channel, she's amazing. She has a very intellectual way about uh, describing perfume and talking about them. I love her channel. I will link it below. She has a method of smelling perfumes from the bottle that I'll be using today. She smells from the nozzle as well as the cap. So you get a little bit of a broader um, scent picture of the perfume without having to spray it. So I'm going to save myself and Daphne by doing that today. Okay, let's jump in. I want to start with the Shepras and some classic Shepras. This is Habanita by Molinard. I love this. It is, oh God, it's like face powder and vanilla and vetiver. Uh, so it's very powdery, vanilla-y, and then this greenness pops through. Um, there's leather. It's beautiful. This is one of the few perfumes that my husband does not like. <laughs> when I first put this on, um, we were actually perfume shopping together, and I put this on, and I was wearing it around the city and thinking, damn, I smell good. So I finally asked him what he thought, and he's like, no. I love it. This is a classic Shepra, perfect in the fall. This is Habanita by Molinard. This happens to be the Eau de Toilette. That is the formulation that I like. It's a little bit lighter. I think it's beautiful. The second Shepra is Eau de Soir by Sisley. Um, this one oh, is so bright and sunny. It has lemon, it has florals, it has the Shepra right up top. When I first spray this on, it's a nightmare for about 10 minutes. That's for real. It's very, very strong. All of these Shepras are strong. They have throw, they have lasting power, so be very careful when you're using them. A couple of sprays of this is just perfect. And after that 10 minute mark, ah, this dries down to just a glorious warm. Um, the lemon still stays, the brightness still stays, but it's like a, a late fall afternoon. It is so beautiful. Come on, remember the cap. This is Eau de Soir by Sisley. This cap is kind of interesting, but it's also a little cheaply made, which is which surprises me because this perfume is probably the priciest in this collection. I think this is uh, close to 100 bucks, maybe a little bit over. It is beautiful though. The next perfume is an absolute classic Shepra. This is Cabochard by, whoops, here, let's turn it this way so you can see the bow and the top. Cabochard by Grace, Gray? I'm not sure how to say that, G-R-E-S. <laughs> I was going to look that up before the video. I spaced it. Um, but this smells to me, um, okay, this is going to seem really weird, but we had a fire raging by us. It must have been a few years ago, um, kind of up on the mountain, a lot of smoke. Uh, we were watching the helicopters go back and forth and dump water on it. Very high drama. So I put this on and stood out on the deck and watched them fight the fire. And this really matched that smell of kind of burning autumn leaves. Now, it doesn't sound particularly appealing, but it wears really well. 
very leathery, very woody. Uh, it's beautiful. I really love this one. This is Cabochard by Grace. No, G-R-E-S. <laughs> you look it up. The next one is a Shepra that I love. I can't wear it. I have this in a video of perfumes that I just cannot wear, but I still love it and pray that one day I can wear it. This is Diva by Angaro. This is a rose Shepra, and I think it's beautiful. I love it out of the bottle. I love it on other people and on me. It is not a chemistry match at all. I can't wear it. But if you can, you'll love it. This is primarily rose and honey. Those notes are a little bit tricky, but they work beautifully in here. I think what I can't do is the civet. That often is just pissy on me. I, I don't do very well with that note. And it ruins the, the rose and the honey for me completely. But if you can wear it, you can see this is almost full. I keep testing it again and again and again. I tested it just the other day. It doesn't work on me. It's beautiful though. Diva by Angaro. And this is the Eau de Parfum. There is a Eau de Toilette. I haven't tried that one. I might have more luck with that though. This is a Shepra that I love, have loved for a long time. This is Nikki de Saint Paul. Um, look at this bottle. It's blue, kind of opaque, and then it's got this kind of snaky pattern on the lid. It's just fabulous. This is a Shepra with a little bit of sweetness and uh, like burn a burning cigar. I love that. It's uh, if you wear this, it smells like you smoke in a good way. It's still quite sweet. The greenness, the oak moss piece of it peeks out just a little bit. It's fabulous. It's probably the sweetest of any of these Shepras that I'm mentioning. And I just love it. My husband loves this one. So <laughs> Habanita, nah. but he does love this. It's really beautiful. Still widely available. I think this came out in the late 70s, but it doesn't have that dated feel that some Shepras can have. This is Nikki de Saint Paul. Um, I, I think it's her signature scent. Really beautiful. When I was growing up, Estee Lauder was considered a luxury brand. My, my mother wore Estee Lauder perfumes, and I have three Shepras from uh, that company that I think are really beautiful. The first one is Private Collection, and this is, uh, it goes on very green, like really evergreen. When I first put it on, it's just like, wow, I, I didn't know how I was going to feel but it very quickly dries down to kind of a creamy, grassy, slightly floral Shepra that is really just beautiful. It, uh, it has good lasting power, but it doesn't have the throw that some of these others do. It's really very gentle and beautiful. This is the last perfume I bought for my mother before she died. I bought a bottle and she liked it so much that I got her one too. This is Private Collection by Estee Lauder. The second Shepra from Estee Lauder that I have and love is Knowing. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. It's a, uh, mm, it's a, a more obvious Shepra. The oak moss is right up top. And this is also rosed based, um, but it's like velvety and outdoorsy at the same time. It's, it's elegant and just dries down. Fabulous. This is almost a perfect match for my chemistry in terms of a classic Shepra. Oh, S.A. Lauder got this one right. It's rose, velvet, oak moss, some vanilla. It's gorgeous. That's Knowing by Estee Lauder. The last one by Estee Lauder was my mother's signature scent years ago. And I'm telling you what, I just, I have to have a bottle at all times. This is Azure by Estee Lauder. This is a gritty, 
dirty, worn leather shepra that is so beautiful. At the same time that it's a dirty leather, it also brings to mind uh, the Mediterranean, the beach, um, all those greens, you know, that, that might be growing wild. It's absolutely fabulous. This is so, so strong. I can wear it once in a great while, and I love having it because it reminds me of my mother, but it does not suit my personality very well. It's just too, it, it's too rough for a Shepra for me to truly love, um, but it is classic. And if you love that worn leather, kind of dirty, um, if you're looking for the Shepra of all time, this is it, Azure by Estee Lauder. Okay, that is all my classic Shepras um, that I want to share today. Now I'm going to show you some perfumes that I've, I, I, I just think they're amazing and fall is what they were born for. So here we go. There are two by MAC. One I think I featured on my channel before. This is Velvet Teddy. Um, it uh, could be a dupe for Tom Ford's uh, Tobacco Vanille. God. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, Maria, I keep forgetting your method. It's a good one though. Oh my God, you guys, this, this is tobacco and vanilla. It's fuzzy, it's uh, warm, sweet. Oh, this is stunning. I haven't worn it for a while. Ooh, that might be my uh, glass of wine on the deck <laughs> perfume tonight. This is Velvet Teddy by MAC. Just stunning. The other one by MAC um, is also amazing. This is Ruby Woo. Um, you probably know if you're into perfume like I am that MAC did this series of perfumes that match up with the lipsticks. They are the same name. They've colored them kind of the same um, in the top of the bottle. They're fabulous. This one, oh, this is all cherries and secondhand cigarette smoke. Wow, it's beautiful. Well, I love secondhand cigarette smoke. I've mentioned that on this channel before. It's like if I'm outside on a cold morning or a cool evening and someone wants to smoke a cigarette, please stand by me. <laughs> Don't judge. I love that smell. And this is that smell. So if you, if you hate secondhand smoke, you're not gonna like this. But the cherry really mellows it out. It's such an interesting combination. Oh, I love it. This is Mac, Ruby Woo. Okay, next is a perfume from Clinique. I have and love Aromatics in, in white. This is its sister perfume, Aromatics in black. And this is a beauty. This is a jasmine, mm. kind of outdoorsy, kind of woody. It's beautiful. It's been described as kind of a light version of Alien. I find them quite different, but it is jasmine based. Oh, it's fabulous in the fall because it has kind of a blankety, uh, warm and coziness to it. That's just really beautiful. Mm. This is Aromatics in Black by Clinique. And this bottle is just that's so great. It's just sleek and sexy, easy to hold. Mm, love that. Another perfume that I think is perfect in the fall is Sea Intense by Giorgio Armani. And I have the original C2. This is the better one. Oh, it has all the elements of sea. It's got the black currant, it's got patchouli, it's got vanilla. But what this has, has that the other one doesn't is uh, a, a wine quality to it, kind of a fermented um, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, feeling to it. Oh, it's just beautiful. It, it's really unisex. My husband loves this too. It wears really well on him. I've still in it today for this video. I had to promise to give it back to him, but this is beautiful in the fall. That is C, whoops, here we go. Sea Intense by Giorgio Armani. 
the bottle here is just gorgeous too. Very, very heavy um, and just really high quality. It's a beauty. The next perfume is uh, a, this is, I think, the only niche perfume that I have in here. And this is by Serge Luton. This is Amber Sultan. So all of you have probably heard of this perfume, even if you're not in the niche market. And I'm not, I don't buy niche anymore. This is kind of when I was ending up my, my niche experimental phase. But dang, this is beautiful. This is the amber to end all ambers. It's my equivalent of um, Shalimar Eau de Parfum in the world of Orientals and in the world of all Shalimars. This is the same in the world of ambers. It is so deep and resinous and it has a lot of herbal quality to it. So it's not just a, a dark amber, but the amber grounds it and it has all these other resins that live with it. It's just beautiful. Even a little bit of raisin I'm picking up today. Oh, here we go. As I smell this, it's stunning. It lasts forever on the skin. It has great sillage, um, great lasting power. It's fabulous. This is Amber Sultan by Serge Luton's. I think it's available on FragranceNet on uh, many other online stores too. The next one is a celebrity perfume. I had to steal this one from my husband too. Promise to bring this back. <laughs> He's so high maintenance. This is Rogue by Rihanna. I really like this one and think that in terms of a fun leather perfume for the fall, this is an easy one. I actually like it better on him than I do on me. It seems to suit his chemistry really well, but I do wear it once in a while. When I'm in all black, if I'm feeling badass, I like this one. This is, uh, it's been um, compared to Bottega Veneta. I don't think they're so similar. This isn't quite as dirty as that one, but it does have some of those same leather elements. This is Rogue by Rihanna. Okay, my last one uh, is kind of a surprising choice because it's like a Shebra powder to me. This is White Soul by Ted Lapidou. It's wonderful. It's powdery and green and it has, uh, it, it smells like uh, pine coney dirt. I can't really explain it. There's a sweetness to it too and a definite powderiness to it. This is a great bedtime perfume. It's the only powdery perfume that I have that shares some of those Shepra elements of greenness, of oak moss, of that kind of, um, not exactly patchouli, but more mm, vetiver and uh, evergreen. It's really beautiful. I love this bottle too. I mean, look how that's been shaped to fit your hand really well. It's white, opaque, it's gorgeous. This is White Soul by Ted Lapidou. Let me know what you're wearing right now. What fall perfumes are just making you happy? And until I see you again, smell fabulous all the time, keep your nose super strong. I'll see you again soon. Bye.